So I was on Hacker News a couple of days ago, which is basically Reddit for people that actually understand technology, and a thread was posted titled, I probably spend more on piracy than if I just paid for content. And this caught my attention. I was wondering, how could this be true, especially in today's world of people having dozens of subscriptions to different services, and so many of them are also raising their prices, and we have people that are paying hundreds of dollars a month in some cases for these subscriptions. So I clicked on it and this person explains that they pirate a lot of content, mostly TV and movies. Uh, so video files is obviously what they're storing. And they built a computer with about 30 terabytes of hard drive space to store it that conservatively cost them $1,200. And it's an older computer with a lot of hard drives, probably cost him about $45 per month in power. I'm going to want to add more storage space soon and have about $500 slated for that. And he pays a Usenet subscription and a subscription to indexers for let's say $10 a month. Uh, and so he's saying that if he stopped pirating, he'd have an extra $1,200 and still have a budget of $55 per month for streaming services. And then he goes on to explain some of the reasons why he still pirates, like show availability. If Netflix or Hulu doesn't have the shows that you wanna watch, then you're screwed. You gotta go try and find some subscription that does, and then you're paying even more money for it. And also having a local copy. So this is something that I know a lot of people not living in the cities, people living out in the sticks can probably appreciate. Uh, because streaming services, if you're living out in the woods, is not going to be a good time. You're going to have a lot of buffering. You're not going to be able to watch things in 4K. But obviously, if you have a local copy on a hard drive or a Blu-ray, it's no problem. And then, of course, there's hundreds of comments replying to this. But you're here to hear what I have to say about this. A quick disclaimer, I do not condone online piracy. It's illegal and against YouTube's terms of service. And I would never break those rules because that would be bad. But anyway, what this person is describing is not just piracy, but long-term data storage for a lot of data, about 30 terabytes. So the biggest cost here was obviously the hard drives, right? And let's assume that these drives are in RAID 1, which you'd want for long-term storage anyway. And I know that he said that the drives are older, but even if you were going to aspire to do what this person's doing now and you buy, let's say, four newer 16 terabyte drives so that you could put 64 gigs in RAID 1, that's still going to cost you about $1,200. And that's really only necessary if, again, you're going to store this content long term and, of course, you're going to seed the content. Because, of course, you should be seeding your um, Linux ISOs and nothing else because piracy is bad. But seeding is what makes it all possible. Although this person said that they're on Usenet, so they're not even seeding and they probably are just data hoarding. I'm not as knowledgeable about Usenet. Its peak popularity was a little bit before my time, but I know it's still a really popular alternative to torrents, or I guess torrents are an alternative to Usenet since it existed first. And the file sharing on Usenet is also supposed to be faster than most torrents as well. But anyway, this guy is sitting on about 30 terabytes of data for personal use and maybe creating a torrent or a file whose other torrents died out uh, due to lack of seeders every now and again. But man, 30 terabytes for personal use, that's a lot. Like if we compare it to One Piece, one of the longest running animes with like a thousand episodes, not even exaggerating, that whole thing takes up about 235 gigabytes. It could actually use up less if you were to compress it or have it at a lower resolution than 720p, which is what it aired at, or I guess what it was originally at. Now, all of One Piece, to watch that, would take you 16 and a half days. And that's if you watched it 24-7, which I'm pretty sure is a form of torture that was banned by the Geneva Convention. That's, that's some pretty evil stuff to subject a person to, to over two weeks of One Piece. So... If we do some quick maths, let's say 16 days of content take up 250 gigs on average. If this person's drives are full of media with a similar bit rate, then he's got 
1,920 days of content on his drive if he was watching that 24 seven. So pretty much a decade of content for even the laziest of couch potatoes. Uh, but do you really need more? Okay, or do you even need that much to begin with? Because I don't think I've consumed close to that much unique content in my life. I've seen a lot of reruns of stuff. I mean, that's just how I enjoy content. I don't know if maybe that's how my brain is programmed because I grew up watching, well, TV. <laughs> and so there were reruns of stuff all the time, like every Saturday cartoons would come on, but oftentimes it'd be reruns of cartoons you've already seen 10 times. And certain things that I even like in my adult life, like South Park, King of the Hill, and the Boondocks, I've seen that, at least some episodes, over a dozen times. There's movies like Django Unchained and Wolf of Wall Street and Kill Bill, which I basically just watch again and again, like every year. It's like an annual tradition, I guess. Let's watch some great movies again. Now, yes, I know for torrents to work, well, this guy isn't torrenting anyway, but let's pretend that he is. Let's pretend that he's a big Chad pirate that's seeding 30 terabytes of content. Man, what a guy. How long do you actually seed all of that for, though? Because personally, I seed most things to get a ratio of three or four. Uh, Linux ISOs, of course. Sometimes if it's something good, like if it's a really good Linux ISO and I'm one of the first people to uh, download it, then I'll end up letting the ratio get up to 10 or 20 because I got a really fast internet connection. So a lot of people, when they're downloading those ISOs, they end up connecting to me. Uh, but at that point, once 10 or 20 people have downloaded a file from me and I'm not interested in having that file anymore, I'm gonna delete it. And I'm going to free up some space for something else, or I'll just move the files into cold storage since seeding requires a computer to be on and connected to the internet, but I've got drives that aren't. So that, I guess that's my cold storage, although it's not like tape drives or anything crazy like that. That would be much better for really long-term cold storage. But anyway, the point is downloading and even sharing your totally legal Linux ISOs that are not against YouTube's terms of service to share, uh, it's not going to cost you this much. You, you could probably get a four terabyte hard drive for less than $100 and to store and seed your media. And by the time it gets full, the first things that you put on there will probably have been there for a year. So you've been seeding it for an entire year. You'll probably have a ratio in the tens, maybe even the hundreds if it's very popular. And I feel like at that point you've done your part. Okay, if just 10% of people seeded torrents for a year that way, then a torrent would never ever die. And as for data hoarding, that's always been an expensive game. Again, it's something that's important to do. If you've got the money, you know, do it. It can be like a form of altruism to archive data that's basically been deleted from the internet. Uh, but the best thing to do with that is either suck it up, you know, do it as a form of altruism. This is you giving back to the world, archiving all this data, or find a way to monetize your data hoarding, which of course I can't give you a YouTube tutorial on for if it's pirated data, but think outside the box. I've heard that Vietnam is a really nice country with really nice servers. Like and comment, tag the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.